in yesterday's class we have discussed about uh, some basic points about autonomic pharmacology in that we have discussed about the receptors and some basic points uh, about uh, autonomic uh, nerves in that we have seen the classification of nervous system we have seen central nervous system and peripheral nervous system in peripheral nervous system we have autonomic nerves and somatic nerves all these basic things we have discussed in previous classes and then we have uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves so we are discussing about parasympathetic nervous system in that in previous class uh, we discussed about uh, receptors of acetylcholine okay in that we have muscarinic receptors and nicotinic receptors we have already discussed and we have also discussed about uh, uh, parasympathetic nerves which are mainly associated in the cranial nerves so in that we discussed the third cranial nerve seventh ninth and tenth cranial nerves are parasympathetic nerves i think in yesterday's class we have discussed all these things okay so in today's class we'll try to learn the cholinergic agents which are simply called as the drugs which will act on cholinergic system or on parasympathetic nervous system okay cholinergic agents cholinergic agents or those agents which are which are acting on which are acting on parasympathetic parasympathetic nervous system okay or the drugs which will act on muscarinic and nicotinic receptors so in cholinergic agents we have two types of drugs particularly see in cholinergic agents we have two types of drugs number 1 first type of cholinergic drugs we have cholinergic agonist drugs cholinergic agonist and second type of cholinergic agents we have anti cholinergic drugs anti cholinergic drugs yes cholinergic agonist drugs or those drugs which will increase the actions of acetylcholine or which will increase the actions of muscarinic and nicotinic receptors very simple and anti cholinergic drugs are those drugs which will try to decrease the actions of muscarinic receptors or nicotinic receptors or simply they are called anti muscarinic or anti nicotinic drugs okay so in today's class we will try to discuss about cholinergic agonist drugs in today's class we'll try to discuss about cholinergic agonist cholinergic agonist or those drugs which will mimic the actions of acetylcholine or the drugs which will increase the actions of muscarinic and nicotinic receptors so cholinergic agonist drugs are also called as cholinomimetic agents or parasympathomimetic agents simple these are different terms cholinergic agonist drugs are also called as cholinomimetics cholinomimetics means the drugs which will mimic the actions of acetylcholine and parasympathomimetics means the drugs which will mimic the actions of parasympathetic system parasympathetic system means cholinergic nerves or cholinergic system okay so these basic terms you should not forget this this these terms are very important for second year students that's why i am uh, focusing on each and every term anyways so we understood what is cholinergic agent in cholinergic agent we have cholinergic agonist and anti cholinergic or cholinergic antagonist also we can say anti cholinergic drugs are also called as anti uh, 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 cholinergic antagonist or anti cholinergics okay ab dekho so in today's class we will deeply understand about cholinomimetic agents or parasympathomimetic agents or cholinergic agonist agents clear now see so uh, uh, before understanding the cholinergic agents in that cholinergic agonist let us first discuss or understand the classification of cholinergic agonist drugs or cholinomimetic drugs okay so this classification is very easy to understand see in this classification cholinergic agonist classification we have mainly we have two types of drugs number 1 drugs which are acting directly simply they are called directly acting drugs dhyan se suno sab log and second we have indirectly acting drugs indirectly acting drugs so what is the meaning of directly acting cholinergic agonist and indirectly acting cholinergic agonist we 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 all know that cholinergic agonist or the drugs which will increase the actions of acetylcholine clear yes so we are discussing about the drugs which will increase the actions of acetylcholine or which will mimic the actions of acetylcholine so in that we have directly acting drugs and indirectly acting drugs see in cholinergic receptors we have m1 to m5 we have m1 m1 to m5 right so we have five muscarinic receptors and we also have two nicotinic receptors one is nn and one is nm total seven receptors we have right acetylcholine ke sath receptors hai we have seven acetylcholine receptors these seven acetylcholine receptors if the drugs there are some drugs 
which will directly go and act like acetylcholine on the receptors so there are some drugs which will directly go and they will bind on the muscarinic and nicotinic receptors and they will try to stimulate the actions of that receptor so they are directly acting like acetylcholine hence they are called directly acting drugs let me repeat the point see in cholinergic agonist we have directly acting drugs and indirectly acting drugs directly acting drugs ka meaning kya hai these drugs these drugs will directly go and bind on the muscarinic and nicotinic receptors and they will act, they will act very similar to acetylcholine they are having same actions like acetylcholine that's why those drugs are called directly acting cholinergic agonist second year wale i think you all understood this term and see second second class of cholinergic agonist is indirectly acting drugs indirectly acting drugs or anticholinesterases yaad rakh lo these are not anticholinergic drugs these are anticholinesterases anticholinesterase drugs or they are cholinesterase inhibitors these drugs are cholinesterase inhibitors hence they are called anticholinesterases now see these drugs indirectly acting drugs what they do they will bind the receptor uh, uh, they will bind the uh, enzyme see in previous class i told when acetylcholine releases in the synapse or in the muscle end plate acetylcholine is broken down by acetylcholine stress enzyme right so here we have very important enzyme this enzyme breaks the acetylcholine which is released acetylcholine will be broken down into choline and acetate by this enzyme which is called acetylcholine stress see there are some drugs which will inhibit this enzyme if this enzyme is inhibited what will happen if this enzyme is inhibited the acetylcholine which is releasing here its concentration gets increased right concentration of acetylcholine will be increased so when concentration of acetylcholine increases or when acetylcholine is not metabolized what will happen more amount of acetylcholine goes and binds on the muscarinic and nicotinic receptors and what happens more amount of action more amount of acetylcholine action can be seen more acetylcholine action can be seen so these drugs the drugs which are inhibiting this enzyme and they are causing acetylcholine actions or they are increasing acetylcholine actions these drugs are called indirectly acting cholinergic agonist drugs okay see in cholinergic agonist we have directly acting drugs they will act directly on the receptor but this indirectly acting drugs what they are doing they are inhibiting the enzyme and through that what they are doing they are increasing acetylcholine and by increasing acetylcholine it is showing more actions of acetylcholine i think you understood the difference between directly acting and indirectly acting and in indirectly acting we have reversible inhibitors and irreversible inhibitors simple reversible inhibitors what they do once the drug once the drug inhibits this enzyme after some time see for example this is the enzyme okay and this is a drug this is a drug when drug comes and binds on this enzyme when drug comes and binds on the enzyme after some time what happens after some time the enzyme the enzyme and drug will be dissociated the drug will dissociate from the enzyme enzyme will be separated and drug will be separated that type of inhibition is called reversible inhibition ek bar bind ho gaya sometime after uh, for particular period of time the enzyme was inhibited the action of enzyme is not shown the action of acetylcholine is shown and after some time what happens the drug will dissociate from the enzyme and the enzyme will be left freely that type of inhibition is called reversible inhibition so in indirectly acting drugs we have two types again in indirectly acting drugs we have two types one is reversible when one is reversible inhibitors and second one is irreversible inhibitors reversible inhibitors what they do they will dissociate the enzyme after some time and in irreversible once the enzyme is inhibited the drug will not dissociate from the enzyme total drug drug and enzyme will be metabolized at a time that type of drugs ek bar pakad liye na enzyme ko zindagi bhar chhodenge nahi that's why they are called irreversible inhibitors okay i think I, you all understood the classification so see in cholinergic agonist in directly acting drugs we have two more types we have choline esters these are alkaloids and we have uh, these are also uh, these are esters and these are alkaloids okay in choline esters we have acetylcholine bethanocol carbocol these are these are three drugs a b c yaad rakh lo a b c and one more drug is also there which is called methanocol uh, just remember it as a b c m acetylcholine methanocol carbocol or methacholine methacholine and in alkaloids we have pilocarpine and muscarin these are alkaloids pilocarpine is obtained from uh, um, pilocarpine plant and muscarin is obtained from amanita species of mushrooms okay anyways so these these are directly acting drugs about each and about each drug i'll explain in detail and in indirectly acting drugs we have reversible enzyme inhibitors and irreversible enzyme inhibitors 
in reversible enzyme inhibitors we have carbamates some alcoholic compounds and other compounds in that physiostigmine neostigmine peridostigmine rivastigmine yaad rakh lo these carbamates are very very commonly used in hospital this carbamate type of reversible inhibitors so in that we have physiostigmine neostigmine peridostigmine and rivastigmine what these drugs they do they will inhibit the acetylcholinesterase enzyme for some time only okay whenever as as far as these drugs are inhibiting acetylcholinesterase enzyme acetylcholinesterase enzyme till that time till that time actions of acetylcholine will be increased okay and in alcoholic alcohol containing drugs we have endorphonium and in others we have donazepil galantamine and tacrin yes for second years you try to remember all these drugs okay classification is very important once classification is perfect you can understand remaining concepts very easily and in irreversible inhibitors we have organophosphate compounds very very dangerous drugs actually these are in that we have parathion malathion sarin somain tabun these are gases we have diflos and we have ecotheophate and in carbamates also some drugs are irreversible inhibitors in that we have propoxor and carbaryl and about this organophosphates we have so many other examples especially this organophosphate compounds are used not used clinically but they are used as pesticides in the farming uh, they are used mainly as pesticides as insecticides insecticides to kill insects okay so as insecticides organophosphate compounds are very famous they are not clinically used agar koi clinically if 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 anybody takes this agent what happens these drugs will inhibit the acetylcholinesterase enzyme and by after that what happens Mo, the enzyme is totally deactivated ek bar pakad liya to kya hoga enzyme ko chhodega nahi na these drugs irreversible inhibitors so till new enzyme is produced till new enzyme is produced till that time acetylcholine actions will be continued in the body so what happens if acetylcholine activity is increased what happens all cholinergic muscarinic and nicotinic receptor activity will be increased raised rapidly and patient will have so many lethal consequences that all things we will discuss further so i think you all understood the classification of cholinergic agonist second year wale did you all understand this classification isme koi doubt hai to you should ask immediately prajwal chivani i think everybody understood this classification okay now so uh, this one also we have already discussed so uh, some clinical points from goodman gilman so i have taken this image from goodman gilman clinical pharmacology textbook uh, you can refer that textbook for better understanding see uh, some clinically used muscarinic agonist see muscarinic agonist muscarinic receptor agonist uh, also called as sim- uh, parasympathomimetic they are also called parasympathomimetics these drugs are particularly acting on muscarinic receptors they are not acting on nicotinic receptors okay so in muscarinic receptor agonist we have methacholine just now we discussed in the classification we have carbocol bethanocol phylocarpin and sevimelin sevimelin is one drug new drug added here we can add here sevimelin somewhere here okay sevimelin sevimelin okay so Uh, these are cholinergic agonist drugs now about each and every drug i'll try to explain you uh, where do we use cholinergic agonist drugs and where do we use uh, cholinergic antagonist cholinergic antagonist that we'll discuss later now we'll first complete cholinergic agonist drugs see cholinergic agonist drugs cholinergic agonist drugs are those drugs which will increase the actions of acetylcholine or which will directly go and Uh, stimulate the muscarinic receptors and nicotinic receptors yes this point is clear to everybody right now you see in cholinergic agonist just now we have discussed the classification in that uh, directly acting drugs we have acetylcholine we have bethanocol carbocol and metacholine okay so, so you can remember them as a b c m so in that the first agent is acetylcholine see this is the basic structure of acetylcholine we all know acetylcholine is synthesized in the parasympathetic nerves okay when acetylcholine is released it will go and bind on the muscarinic and nicotinic receptors and it will show all muscarinic actions and nicotinic actions this point is clear now you see acetylcholine when acetylcholine is injected through iv immediately acetylcholine will be metabolized by one enzyme which is called pseudocholinesterase or butylcholinesterase in last class i explained you what is acetylcholinesterase in acetylcholinesterase enzyme we have one is, one is pseudocholinesterase and one is true cholinesterase in the blood plasma in the blood plasma we have pseudocholinesterase if acetylcholine if acetylcholine is given through iv immediately acetylcholine I mean, pseudocholinesterase will metabolize and its actions are not seen properly agar agar pseudocholinesterase enzyme is inhibited or if more amount of acetylcholine is injected into the body 
it will show the following actions on the muscarinic receptors see in previous class we discussed muscarinic receptors now i am explaining you i am explaining you the actions of dhyan se suno sab log actions of actions of acetylcholine ach actions of acetylcholine if acetylcholine is injected its duration of action will be very low it will show actions only up to minutes okay but still we should we should try to understand or learn the actions of acetylcholine now you see when acetylcholine is injected or when acetylcholine is released from the parasympathetic nerves on cardiovascular system on cardiovascular system mainly uh, it stimulates m2 receptors and what it does it will depress the actions of heart it will decrease the cardiac output it will decrease the cardiac output these all points we have discussed in last class cardiac output will be decreased and blood pressure will be decreased and on blood vessels and on blood vessels it will stimulate the m3 receptors and it will release no nitric oxide and it will cause vasodilation vasodilation and again it will cause reduced blood pressure it will decrease it will decrease blood pressure it causes hypotension hypotension it, it decreases blood pressure next on the smooth muscles on the smooth muscles smooth muscles we have discussed in last class smooth muscles are present in ga tract smooth muscles are present in urinary bladder smooth muscles are present in lungs uh, bronchioles smooth muscles are present in blood vessels okay in see m on smooth muscles actually m3 receptors are present m3 receptors are present on all kinds of smooth muscles on the ga tract it increases peristaltic movement and it causes diarrhea on urinary bladder it 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 contracts the uh, trigonal uh, uh, smooth muscles of bladder and it causes urination urination and on the bronchioles it constricts the bronchial smooth muscles and it causes bronco constriction bronco constriction very very important point and through that what what happens it will cause shortness of breath it will cause shortness of breath dhyan se suno sab log and next we also have m3 receptors on all kinds of exocrine glands exocrine glands so when m3 receptors are activated by acetylcholine what happens all the exocrine hormones or exocrine secretions will be released and what happens all exocrine like lacrimation it causes salivation it causes uh, perspiration it increases the release of gastric acid gastrin so all and in the eyes in the eyes also we have m3 receptors in the eyes it causes it causes meiosis meiosis and lacrimation and finally on the central nervous system these are all the actions of acetylcholine don't forget okay in central nervous system what i told it will stimulate the m4 and m5 receptors it will stimulate the m4 and m5 receptors and what it does anybody from the class in central very good very good it causes or it stimulates cognition it stimulates cognitive power okay stimulant activity depressant activity uske upar it has no specific role but it will it will cause cognitive power it will increase cognition and sometimes if acetylcholine acts on nicotinic receptors we have nn and nm if nm receptor is activated what happens all skeletal muscles will be contracted it causes convulsions here it may cause convulsion so all these actions are seen if acetylcholine is slightly increased in the body acetylcholine kab increase hoga if anybody is taking any of these drug if anybody is taking any of these drug isme se koi ek drug lega patient to what happens patient will show all these actions just now i told all these actions will be shown in the body clear clear everybody now see uh, we have to learn about acetylcholine actually acetylcholine is not clinically used first of all acetylcholine has acetylcholine has unspecific actions acetylcholine has unspecific actions acetylcholine is immediately metabolized by pseudocholinesterase okay pseudocholinesterase enzyme and it is not because of these two reasons it is not used clinically it is not used clinically agar ye acetylcholine iv mein bhi diye sometimes it will show the actions just now whatever i told you and uh, actually one thing you should not forget acetylcholine when it is injected it will not cross blood brain barrier it will not cross blood brain barrier so because of these thing acetylcholine injections can't show cognitive power or it will not show actions on central nervous system i want to increase my uh, concentration power i want to increase the uh, cognitive power so i want to take acetylcholine aisa karke koi acetylcholine liya to what happens patient will have diarrhea patient will have vomiting patient will have perspiration patient will have cyanuria patient will have urination but patients 
concentration will not be increased why because acetylcholine will not cross blood brain barrier and it will not show actions in central nervous system this is one very important point you should not forget i think you all understood about acetylcholine simple si cheez acetylcholine hospital ke andar kabhi use nahi karte agar use karna hai to in some experimental conditions in experiments in animals and in uh, uh, some uh, research related things we use acetylcholine just to see the actions of muscarinic and nicotinic receptors okay so that is about acetylcholine now we'll go to the next drug a ke baad kya aayega b a b c m i told you the synonym okay b is bethanol right see one more point actually this bethanol is also not commonly used in hospital but in some cases in very few very rare cases in very rare cases bethanol is used so in which conditions bethanol is used see acetylcholine was having unspecific actions yes acetylcholine was having unspecific actions but bethanol ka ek difference is there the difference between bethanol and acetylcholine is bethanol has specific actions on gi gi tract it has specific actions on gi tract and on urinary system very very important point to remember the difference between acetylcholine and bethanol see bethanol bethanol b bethanol is having gi tract and urinary system uh, specific actions mainly on it will act mainly on gat and on urinary system so because of this specific action because of this specific action bethanol is used in post operative conditions see ऑपरेशन होने के बाद वेन वेन पेशेंट इज गिवेन विथ सम एनस्थीशिया ओके एनस्थीशिया देने के बाद और वेन पर्सन इज परफॉर्म्ड विथ सम ऑपरेशन सर्जरीज और वेन पेशेंट इज हैविंग डिलीवरीज ओके पोस्टमार्टम बोलते हैं सो इन पोस्ट ऑपरेटिव पोस्ट ऑपरेटिव एंड इन पोस्टमार्टम कंडीशन पेशेंट विल हैव यूरिनरी रिटेंशन हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू नो अबाउट यूरिनरी रिटेंशन यूरिनरी रिटेंशन यूरिनरी रिटेंशन there is a condition called urinary retention actually see whenever patient is having obstruction see man lo this is kidney this is kidney this is ureter and this is bladder right and this is urethra see kidneys will produce urine right the the produced urine will go from the ureter into the bladder okay and in bladder if somewhere here in the urethra if obstruction is there what will happen the bladder will be filled the bladder will be filled so the uh Uh, what we can say the loss of urine uh, decreased urine output simply we can say decreased urine output or obstruction or inappropriate release of urine from the bladder bladder mein se urine bahar nahi niklega na that condition is called urinary retention urinary retention is uh, stoppage of urine from bladder that is called urinary retention usually urinary retention is mainly seen due to obstruction only kisi kahin bhi agar obstruction ho gaya to hi it will cause urinary retention but urinary retention is also seen in in few conditions like post operative and post partum conditions operation ke baad deliveries ke baad okay in that conditions what happens urinary retention can be seen so patient can't urinate properly because the sphincter muscles will be contracted and the detrusor muscles jo hai yahan pe jo detrusor muscles we have on the bladder that will be relaxed wo relax okay okay it will be relaxed totally ye detrusor muscles should contract to excrete the urine out okay so this condition is called non obstructive urinary retention in see this condition in post operative and post partum conditions patient will have non obstructive non obstructive urinary retention so if anybody has non obstructive urinary retention we usually prefer bethanol why because bethanol is specifically acting on gi tract and urinary tract uh, urinary system mainly on the detrusor muscles of urinary bladder when bethanol is given what happens detrusor muscles of the urinary bladder will be contracted and the urine will easily come out from the urethra okay yes or no so here bethanol is the drug of choice in urinary retention condition if anybody has urinary retention what will be the side effect if anybody has urinary retention and if it is preferred in urinary retention what will be the side effect tell me what will be the side effect are you all listening to me see patient is having urinary retention right and we preferred bethanol bethanol is acting on gi tract and urinary tract urinary system so bethanol is given in urinary retention what will be the side effect 
exactly exactly see we need action only on urinary system we we don't need action on ga tract koi patient mein urinary system mein non obstructive urinary retention hai to diarrhea ho sakta diarrhea is not required action so when bithana call is given we should advise the patient that urine urine nikal jayega aaram se but aapko diarrhea hone ke bhi chances hai karke we should tell but that is not a big problem for the patient urinary retention is problem here okay so bithana call is particularly preferred in urinary retention in is ke sath there is one more condition called neurogenic bladder how many of you heard about neurogenic bladder neurogenic bladder neurogenic bladder see there is there is a condition uh see we have parasympathetic nerves sympathetic nerves and we have uh, uh, sensory nerves which are which are attaching to the bladder when the sensory nerves sends information to hypothalamus they will tell that are your bladder is filled that's why what happens hypothalamus activates and it will stimulate parasympathetic nerves what parasympathetic nerves will do they will they will cause contraction they'll release the acetylcholine and they'll contract the retrousal muscles and patient will go for urination right so neurogenic bladder is the condition where patient's nerves the nerve endings which are attaching to the bladder will not work properly or the nerves will not show their actions that may be due to neuritis or that may be due to genetic disorder or that may be due to autoimmune disorders so that is called neurogenic bladder so neurogenic bladder conditions may be बेथना कॉल दे सकते हैं क्लियर बिकॉज इट विल इंक्रीज द एक्शन ऑफ एस्टेलकोलिन एंड इट विल कॉज डेट्रोजर मजल कंट्रेक्शन एंड बाई दैट यूरिन विल भी इजेक्टेड आउट सो याद रख लो न्यूरोजेनिक ब्लैडर कंडीशन में एंड यूरिनरी नॉन ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव यहाँ पे ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव यूरिनरी रिटेंशन है यहाँ पे स्टोन इज ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिंग द ब्लैडर और स्टोन इज ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिंग समवेयर इन द यूरिनरी सिस्टम इन दैट केस इफ यू गो विद बेथना कॉल इट विल कॉज सीवियर क्रैम्स इन द ब्लैडर बहुत दिक्कत हो जाएगी फिर पेशेंट को ब्लीडिंग कैन बी कॉल ब्लीडिंग कैन बी सीन इन द यूरिनेशन बहुत सारी दिक्कत हो सकता है हियर इफ एनी बडी हैज़ ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन वी हैव टू फर्स्ट क्लियर द ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन एंड आफ्टर दैट वी कैन गो विद बेथना कॉल यू शुड नॉट फॉरगेट दैट पॉइंट एंड नेक्स्ट देर इज वन मोर इंपॉर्टेंट इंडिकेशन फॉर बेथना कॉल विच इज एसोसिएटेड विथ जी ए ट्रैक सी इफ एनी बडी हैज़ कॉन्स्टिपेशन और इफ एनी बडी हैज़ कंजेनेटल मेगा कोलान करके एक कंडीशन है और कंजेनेटल मेगा कोलान हैव यू हर्ड अबाउट कंजेनेटल मेगा कोलान इन पीडियाट्रिक डिपार्टमेंट आई थिंक विक्की वॉज टेलिंग वंस सर आई हैव सीन मेगा कोलान कंडीशन आई थिंक शी वैभवी वॉज टेलिंग आई थिंक आई डोंट रिमेंबर एक्जैक्टली हु वॉज सींग दिस कंडीशन इन पीडियाट्रिक डिपार्टमेंट पेशेंट वॉज हैविंग मेगा कोलान विच इज कॉल्ड कंजेनेटल मेगा कोलान ओके सो हियर वॉट विल हैपन पेशेंट विल लैक कोलानिक नर्व्स सो कोलान रहता ना कोलान दी कोलान इज दी एंड 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 वेर इज इट एम टी स्लाइड नहीं है सी लेट मी रब ऑल दिस थिंग्स You all know colon, right? Ilium, colon, rectum, anus, right? See, we have large intestines. In large intestine, just imagine this is anus, and here we have rectum, and this is this is colon, and this is rectum. Okay, colon, rectum, and anus. C R A, crack. C R A, cra. Okay, see. द नर्व्स विच आर अटैचिंग फ्रॉम द ब्रेन टू दी कोलान कोलान के अंदर जो नर्व्स रहे थे दैट नर्व्स विल नॉट बी शोइंग द रैक्शन और लैकिंग ऑफ दिस नर्व्स कैन बी सीन वेन दिस नर्व्स आर लैकिंग इन द कोलान वॉट विल हैपन वेन दी नर्व्स ओके वेन द नर्व्स आर लैकिंग इन द कोलान वॉट विल हैपन कोलानिक मजिल कॉन्ट्रैक्शन कांट बी सीन राइट सो इन दैट केसेस वॉट हैपन्स द कोलानिक कंटेंट विच इज प्रेजेंट इन साइड विल स्टे इन द कोलान इट सेल्फ ओके दैट कंडीशन इज कॉल्ड कंजेनेटल मेगा कोलान सो वहाँ पे वी कैन गो विथ पैरासिम्पथो मिमिटिक ड्रग्स इन दैट बेथना कॉल बिकॉज बेथना कॉल इज सेलेक्टिव फॉर जी एटी नो जी एटी एंड यूरनरी सिस्टम सो इन दिस कंडीशन ऑल्सो वी कैन गो विथ बेथना कॉल एक्चुअली बेथना कॉल के साथ दूसरे सर्जिकल प्रोसीजर्स ऑल्सो वी कैन गो बट बेथना कॉल कैन बी गिवेन आई एम नॉट टेलिंग की बेथना कॉल इज द ओनली एजेंट विच इज यूज बट बेथना कॉल कैन बी यूज ड्यू टू इट्स स्पेसिफिक एक्शन ओके एंड देर इज वन मोर कंडीशन कॉल्ड गैस्ट्रोइसोफाइगल रिफ्लेक्स जी ई आर डी करके कंडीशन है अबाउट दैट कंडीशन ऑल्सो विल डिस्कस इन डिटेल वन डे जी ई आर डी गैस्ट्रोइसोफाइगल रिफ्लेक्स डिसीज सो द गैस्ट्रिक कंटेंट्स विल बी कमिंग आउट थ्रू ओरल कैविटी अपोजिट डायरेक्शन में आते रहता थ्रू दी इसोफाइगस एंड फ्रॉम द फैरिंग्स इन टू दी बकल कैविटी और समटाइम्स इट विल बी कमिंग आउट फ्रॉम द स्टमक इन टू दी इसोफाइगस ओके गैस चेस्ट पेन चेस्ट बर्निंग वो सब हो सकता है इसमें जी आर डी इज ऑल्सो अनदर वेरी डेंजरस Uh, irritable gastric disease. So in this condition also we can go with बेथना कॉल सो टू इंडिकेशन फॉर यूरिनरी सिस्टम एंड टू इंडिकेशन फॉर गैस्ट्रिक सिस्टम बिकॉज ऑफ 
because of its selective actions on urinary system and in GI system, bethanocol is used for in urinary. Uh, what we have non obstructive urinary retention may dete, urinary retention may and neurogenic bladder and in gastric we have we use we use bethanocol in congenital megacolon or in gastroesophageal reflux or both are the conditions we have if anybody has constipation particular particularly neurogenic constipation in that case also we can go with bethanocol so we have bethanocol tablets which are available you can see 25 mg tablets so here if they are given for gastric related indications urinary side effects are seen if they are given for urinary indications gastric related side effects are seen that's it and remember bethanocol is specific for gastric and urinary system i think this drug is clear to you all right and one more point bethanocol they have hospital scan there very very rarely they are used very rarely they are used other than this bethanocol and all we have other specific treatments for constipation we have other drugs and for urinary retention we have some surgical procedures mainly if anybody has obstructive or non obstructive urinary retention obstructive or non obstructive urinary urinary retention mein kya karte simple police catheter laga dete bas okay police catheters are preferred in the hospital inpatient departments anyways chalo i will go with the next drug a ho gaya b ho gaya and next one is c carbocol are you all following me are you all following me yes yes very good so see carbocol is also called carbamicolin it is also very similar or it is the analog of acetylcholin carbocol is not that much used in the hospital first point carbocol is not preferred in the hospital it is used in very rare conditions same like bethanocol very rare conditions rare condition kahan pe sometimes if any patient is performed with cataract surgery cataract surgery cataract surgery in that case it is used and if any patient has glaucoma about glaucoma i'll explain you in detail because this this condition is very interesting and very easy glaucoma ke bare mein pathophysiology signs and symptoms all I'll, I'll, i'll explain you and all treatment we have one treatment strategy for glaucoma here carbocol can be used but it is not drug of choice carbocol can be used in cataract surgery it can be used in glaucoma and sometimes carbocol tablets are also available they are used in urinary retention as well urinary retention we use karte but urinary retention may due to its unspecific actions it will show all adverse effects in other other tissues also carbocol ka main main use kya hai in the eyes why because carbocol it is very compatible for eyes in manufacturing eye drops eye drops ke liye bahut acha use ho sakta hai so in cataract surgery we use and glaucoma we use carbocol okay so other than this carbocol ke kuch bhi uses nahi hai not we don't have any other uses for carbocol sometimes carbocol chewing tablets can be used chewing tablets for uh, uh, xerostomia there is a condition called xerostomia xerostomia what is xerostomia can anybody tell me Zero. very good dry mouth xerostomia is the condition which is which is called dry mouth wahan pe chewable tablets use kare to kya hoga it will it will act like sialogog it will cause sialuria 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 means increased salivation so in that cases also it can be used but clinically is ke other than that it, do, it is not having any other uses okay and carbocol adverse effects it may, it may show other unspecific actions if it is used in the ocular route it may increase lacrimation okay in cataract surgery and in glaucoma to remove the intraocular pressure to decrease the intraocular pressure it will open the mesh trabecular trabecular mesh work and what it does it will decrease the pressure by removing the fluid from the eyes so in that case it is used so we have uh, intraocular solution 0.01% weight by volume you can see iske uses yahi hai iske zyada nahi hai and see for car for for uh, cataract surgery and for glaucoma other than carbocol we have so many other first line drugs while explaining about glaucoma i'll tell you but carbocol can be used okay next one is sevimelin so this is another agent sevimelin is another cholinergic agonist so uh, see sevimelin ke bare mein only one thing i'll i'll, I'll tell you it is used in uh, one we have uh, one uh, autoimmune condition called jog grains syndrome dhyan se suno sab log jog grains syndrome jog grains is the, is the name of the scientist jog grains syndrome how many of you heard about jog grains syndrome 
எஸ் ஜே ஓ ஜிஆர்இஎன்எஸ் ஜோக்ரென்ஸ் சின்ரோம் சி செவிமிலின் செவிமிலின் இஸ் தி கோலினர்ஜிக் அகோனிஸ்ட் ட்ரக் விச் இஸ் அப்ரூவ்ட் பை எஃப்டிஏ ஃபர் ஜோக்ரென்ஸ் சின்ரோம் ஜோக்ரென்ஸ் சின்ரோம் கே லியே அஃபெக்டிவ் ட்ரக் அஃபெக்டிவ் ட்ரக் இஸ் செவிமிலின் வை வை செவிமிலின் இஸ் அஃபெக்டிவ் ஃபார் ஜோக்ரென்ஸ் சின்ரோம் ஐ ஐ டெல் யூ சி ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஆல் இட் இஸ் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் அபவுட் ஜோக்ரென்ஸ் சின்ரோம் சி ஜோக்ரென்ஸ் சின்ரோம் இஸ் ஆட்டோ இம்யூன் டிசார்டர் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் பாயிண்ட் ஜோக்ரென்ஸ் சின்ரோம் இஸ் ஆட்டோ இம்யூன் டிசார்டர் ஆட்டோ இம்யூன் டிசீஸ் ஆட்டோ இம்யூன் டிசீஸ் மீன்ஸ் வாட் some antibodies will be produced by our body itself and they will destroy some antigens or they will destroy some tissues or receptors or anything enzymes or anything in our body auto immune disease is self initiating disease which will destroy our own tissues some antibodies will destroy our own tissues or our macrophages will recognize our own tissues as foreign bodies and they will degrade our own tissues first point it is auto immune disease and in this auto immune disease what happens you know these auto immune disease this auto antibodies will destroy all exocrine glands exocrine glands particularly all exocrine glands exocrine glands destruction of exocrine glands due to auto antibodies is is the clinical presentation that is seen in jogren syndrome clear now second point first point is it is auto immune disease which will destroy exocrine glands okay and next jogren syndrome is very 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 common in women only dhyan se suno jogren syndrome is very very common in women which are women ke liye ye zyada hai because most of the prevalent studies and uh, they are telling that jogren syndrome is uh, is affected only mainly for women males ko bhi aa sakta hai but prevalence is more for women okay so here uh, third point of jogren syndrome what happens see i told it will destroy all exocrine glands right so in exocrine glands mainly what we have exocrine glands in the eyes lacrimal glands exocrine glands in the mouth we have uh, salivary glands exocrine glands we have in vaginal cavity exocrine glands on the skin we have uh, on the skin we have uh, sweat glands on the skin we have sweat glands and along with this sometimes in the gi tract sometimes in the gi tract gastric glands okay see in jogren syndrome signs and symptoms are patient will have dry eyes due to reduced lacrimation patient will have xerostomia dry mouth due to due to loss of or due to lack of saliva patient will have dry vagina vaginal cavity will be dried up patient will have dry skin due to loss of sweat and patient sometimes will have indigestion or patient will have lack of acid secretion and gastric acid secretion gas uh gastrin secretions indigestion ho sakta hai so these are the main clinical presentations we can see in jogren syndrome jogren syndrome is autoimmune disorder which will destroy all exocrine glands particularly seen in women and patient will have all these signs and symptoms clear everybody and see in this condition in jogren syndrome the effective drug or the commonly used drug is sevimilin sevimilin tablet capsules are available actually 30 mg sevimilin capsules so sevimilin and the sevimilin is it is the analog of muscarin yaad rakh lo it is the analog of muscarin 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 ke bare mein i have not taught you i'll tell now muscarin muscarin kya hai what is muscarin muscarin is the alkaloid which is obtained from amanita species from the mushrooms it is a poison actually muscarin is the poison what is muscarin does muscarin will stimulate all muscarinic receptors and this sevimilin sevimilin is the सिंथेटिक एनोलॉग ऑफ मस्कैरिन मस्कैरिन से सिंथेसाइज हुआ है सेविमिलिन इज ऑप्टेंड फ्रॉम मस्कैरिन इट इज सेमी सिंथेसाइज फ्रॉम मस्कैरिन इट इज द फ्रेंड ऑफ मस्कैरिन इट इज द ऑफ स्प्रिंग ऑफ मस्कैरिन ओके सो सेविमिलिन इज वन मोर पॉइंट यू कैन रिमेंबर सेविमिलिन इज वेरी स्पेसिफिक टू ऑल एक्सोक्रेन क्लाइंट्स इट विल शो एक्शन पर्टिकुलरली ऑन एक्सोक्रेन क्लाइंट्स बिकॉज ऑफ दिस रीजन सेविमिलिन इज यूज इन जोग्रेन्स सिंड्रोम जोग्रेन्स सिंड्रोम के अंदर एक्सोक्रेन क्लाइंट्स पूरे डिस्ट्रॉय हो जाते clear and its adverse effects you can see if anybody has uh, uh, jogren syndrome in that case if sevimilin is indicated if sevimilin is given patient will have lacrimation sometime patient will have salivation all these actions you can see jo jo bhi actions exocrine gland ke honge wo sab actions dikhenge patient ko understood about sevimilin everybody A- any doubt in this now we'll go with mithacolin are you all following me mithacolin yes methacholine see among all cholinergic agoni- uh, cholinergic agonist methacholine is never used in the hospital never never but in some 
researches and see methacholine methacholine is used only in one condition it is used to diagnose it is used to diagnose it is used to diagnose the hyperactivity of hyperactivity of bronchioles bronchioles ki activity hyper hai ya nahi wo check karne ke liye we use methacholine other than that methacholine is never used in the hospitals okay methacholine actually inhalant form mein milega as recipient as inhalant or as powder form methacholine is used to diagnose the hyperactivity when it is inhaled immediately what happens methacholine will cause bronchoconstriction because it is a muscarinic or it is a cholinergic agonist if if bronchioles are showing hyperactivity immediately patient will have bronchoconstriction and by if 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 patient has immediate bronchoconstriction we can say that patient is having hyperactivity of bronchioles and methacholine is very very strictly contraindicated in asthma patients never forget that point okay actually methacholine hospital mein use karna hi nahi डायग्नेस करने के लिए वी हैव स्पायरोमेट्री वी हैव अदर टेस्ट आल्सो व्हाई टू टेक रिस्क अगर डायग्नेस करना है सी मेथाकोलिन इज गिवन वन मोर पॉइंट मेथाकोलिन इज गिवन ओनली फॉर पेशेंट्स हु आर नॉन अस्थमैटिक नॉन अस्थमैटिक विथ हाइपर एक्टिविटी ऑफ ब्रांक्यूल्स इन दैट केस ओनली इट शुड बी यूज टू डायग्नेस ओके अदर देन दिस मेथाकोलिन के बारे में कुछ नहीं है मेथाकोलिन हैज ऑल अदर मस्कैरिक एक्शन साइड इफेक्ट यू कैन राइट ऑल गैस्ट्रिक एसिड बढ़ा देगा प्रस्पेशन कर देगा लैक रिमेशन डायरिया urination all that things we can see if it is given systemically very uh, dangerous compound next is we have uh, uh, cholinesters cholin esters were done and now this we have alkaloids okay so in alkaloids pilocarpine is the important compound see pilocarpine is the alkaloid which is obtained from pilocarpus plant pilocarpine is obtained from pilocarpus plant we have ophthalmic solutions that can be used for glaucoma and sometimes it is used in Uh, uh mainly it is used in glaucoma condition only okay pilocarpine in dry eyes sometimes in dry eyes and in uh, glaucoma conditions we use what they do they pilocarpine will directly stimulate the muscarinic receptors and it will cause the secretory activity in the eyes other than this iske bhi actions kuch jyada nahi hai pilocarpine okay next is uh, we have uh, muscarin yes muscarin is the uh, again it is another alkaloid which is obtained from amanita species of mushroom mushrooms in in previous class i think i told some basic things about muscarin okay uh, particularly um, amanita muscaria amanita amanita muscaria amanita muscaria muscaria is the mushroom from this mushroom this amanita species is obtained if anybody accidentally ingests this mushroom patient will develop all muscarinic actions all muscarinic actions very very dangerous so if anybody consumes amanita species of muscaria what should be the treatment or first of all tell me what will be the signs and symptoms if anybody has muscarin poisoning or amanita muscaria poisoning if anybody eats if anybody eats this mushroom what will be the signs and symptoms we we all yes yes we already know see muscarin is specifically it is stimulating muscarinic receptors right we have m1 to m5 m1 to m5 all these muscarinic receptors will be activated and this muscarin can cross blood brain barrier yaad rakh lo this is very important point not acetylcholine acetylcholine is not entering blood brain barrier but muscarin is entering blood brain barrier so muscarin will have m3 m4 m4 and m5 receptor actions right muscarin will have m4 and m5 actions whereas acetylcholine will not have m4 and m5 actions okay so m4 and m5 actions of muscarin can be seen uske actions kya honge cognitive cognitive power bad jayega patient ko sometimes confusion ho jayega sometimes patient will have uh, uh, convulsions patient will have uh, cns stimulatory actions so dose dependent related symptoms we can see cns ke specific actions kuch nahi hai but cognition ke related you can you can see so all m1 actions you can see all m2 actions cardiovascular actions you can see all m3 actions you can see diarrhea lacrimation salivation defecation okay and lacrimation all that things all muscarinic actions you can see now tell me m1 receptors are present in which tissues m1 kahan pe rehte bolo yes gas gastric glands and cns very good and ganglia right especially m1 is m1 actions can be seen on gastric gastric means gastric acid secretions bad jayega गैस्ट्रिक मोटिलिटी बढ़ जाएगी 
So patient will have diarrhea, patient will have defecation, patient will have urination and all M M3 related actions also can be seen. Now tell me, if anybody has muscarin poisoning or amanita poisoning, what treatment will you give? What treatment should be given for amanita muscaria poisoning condition? Anybody? Anticholinergic which drug? Everybody, see, excellent, you have used your common sense, but <clears throat> many researchers, they are telling, atropine should never be used. <clears throat> Actually, theoretically, dekha gaye, toh, atropine should be the drug of choice, because atropine is strong anti-muscarinic agent. But in muscarinic poisoning conditions, atropine should not be given. And what should be given? All supportive treatment should be given. Supportive treatment only should be given. And further exposure of this amanita species should not be uh, should be decreased. That's it. Supportive treatment देखे patient को एक घंटा दो घंटा बचा लिया तो automatic जो muscarin है muscarin metabolism is finished and slowly patient will be recovered. But here atropine should not be given. So guidelines are telling atropine should not be given. Which reason I have not searched. We'll be, I'll, I'll search that in the next class and I'll let you know. Okay. So that is about muscarin. I think about muscarin you all got some basic things. And muscarin is never used in the hospitals. Clear point. Muscarin is never used in the hospitals. Now next. Next one is aricoline. Aricoline is another compound <coughs> which is very similar to uh, what we say muscarin. Okay. It is also an alkaloid which is having same actions on muscarinic receptors. See aricoline compound it is it is obtained this alkaloid is obtained from arica nut. You might have heard about arica Indian nut bolte, chewable nut supari very good supari betel nut betel nut Ah, betel nut betel nut is common name or hindi mein kya bolte isko supari bolte or, or any other name you know about this nut <coughs> this is for in these nuts actually in these nuts in arika palm tree this is the arika tree in kerala and in uti in those places in in, in cold uh, rainy climate conditions uh, these these plants are very commonly cultivated okay so see these nuts are having one alkaloid which is called aricoline okay this aricoline ek cheez yaad rakh lo sab log it has addictive property number one okay it has addictive property and this aricoline directly this aricoline has carcinogenic property carcinogenic property betel nut ke andar jo hai aricoline aricoline has carcinogenic property bahut sare log most of the Phytopharmaceuticals wale, cognancy wale, they tell betel nut is very good for health. It is very good. We have to take after food. Okay, after food liye to digestion badega, gastric motility badegi, acid secretion badega. Ye sab chize, we, we all know that it is a cholinergic agonist drug. Bhai. Aricoline is a cholinergic agonist drug. It has muscarinic and nicotinic actions. We all know this. But ye, ye muscarinic nicotinic action badane ke liye, aram, if you take rest properly, if you, if you do some yoga or some exercises, sympathetic activity bada jayegi automatic. But for digestion purpose, if you want, if you take aricoline or this arica nerds, it will cause addictive property. Addictive property means ek din, do din, tin din liye to next fourth day. Without arica nut, patient will not stay. Betel nut diye to is bachta nahi, to nahi bachega patient. Okay. I mean, nahi bachega matlab patient can't stay without having this nut. Because it is having addictive property. Same like alcohol, same like we have uh, opioid analgesics, all those drugs. CNS, CNS ke upar act karega ye. And a very important point is it will have carcinogenic property. Now these are all the images of aricoline you can see. Okay. So if you want to study or if you want to write one article about arica palm because in all Asian countries in Maldives, India, in uh, all most of the Asian countries uh, people use aricoline, arica nut very commonly. Okay in all eastern part of Asian countries starting from uh, India, Nepal, uh, all these countries ma. okay they will use aricoline very commonly so you can you can write at least one review article whether aricoline is having real carcinogenic property or not both are researchers kare honge so if you review some research papers you can write one paper at the end you can you can tell whether aricoline and arica nut is really having carcinogenic property or not benefits kitte hai disadvantages kitne hai all those things you can write you can write one review paper if anybody is interested you can write okay that is about aricoline which is cholinergic agonist drugs and, and aricoline is also uh, not commonly 
क्लिनिकली यूज इन हॉस्पिटल्स हॉस्पिटल्स में ज़्यादा यूज नहीं करते हरिकोलिन नेक्स्ट इज निकोटिन वॉट इज निकोटिन 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 इज स्पेसिफिक निकोटिनिक रिसेप्टर निकोटिनिक रिसेप्टर अगोनिस्ट राइट मस्कैरिन इज एम रिसेप्टर अगोनिस्ट वेर एज निकोटिन इज एन रिसेप्टर एन रिसेप्टर अगोनिस्ट क्लियर सी लेट मी गिव यू वन बेसिक डिफरेंस बिटवीन निकोटिन निकोटिनिक एसिड निकोटिनिक एसिड निकोटिनिक एसिड एंड अरिकोलिन अरिकोलिन इससे पहले अरिकोलिन वी हैव सीन नो Aricolin is also it is the derivative of nicotinic acid only. Aricolin, aricolin is also nicotinic acid derivative, but it is it is similar to nicotinic acid. So nicotinic acid is it is a uh, vitamin. It is B six vitamin I think. Nicotinic acid is B six vitamin, and nicotine is very different. Nicotine is different. Nicotinic acid is different, and aricolin is different. Aricolin के बारे में already we have discussed. Okay. See, this nicotine is specific on nicotinic receptors of acetylcholine. okay when nicotine binds on n n receptors and on n m receptors it will see on on n n receptors what happens the ganglionic n n receptors will be activated and it will further release more amount of acetylcholine and more amount of adrenaline agar adrenergic system ke n n receptor activate ho gaya to kya hoga adrenaline release hoga if n n receptor of cholinergic nerve activate hoga to more acetylcholine will be released so n n receptor which is present on ganglia if it is activated what happens more amount of acetylcholine and more amount of adrenaline will be released and when n m receptor neuromuscular junction ke pass agar n n receptor activates what happens all mus uh, what we say uh, mus uh, muscle muscles will be contracted skeletal muscles will be contracted and it will show it will show skeletal muscle activity or it will cause convulsions it will cause convulsions overdoses mein convulsions hoga so when nicotine is taken actually nicotine is normally nicotine drug is normally present in tobacco tobacco ke andar एंड बिटल नेट के अंदर भी थोड़ा बहुत निकोटिन रहता है बिटल नेट्स के अंदर भी थोड़ा बहुत निकोटिन निकोटिन रहता है बट मेनली निकोटिन इज प्रेजेंट इन टोबैको ओनली सो वेन एवर ए पेशेंट स्मोक्स दोज हु स्मोक यू नो स्मोकर्स के अंदर वेन दे स्मोक वाट हैपन्स इमीडिएटली देर स्केलिटल मजल एक्टिविटी विल इंक्रीज एंड दे फील दैट दे गॉट सम एनर्जी वेन एवर दे दे आर वीक थोड़ा बहुत वीक होंगे ना तो इमीडिएटली वेन दे स्मोक वाट हैपन्स there skeletal muscle activity increases why because because of nicotine nicotine causes an m receptor and an n receptor activity thoda bahut adrenaline bada dega and patient ko adrenergic activity badhne se kya hoga uh, skeletal muscle bad jayega heart rate bad jayega stimulant stimulant activity ho jayega patient patient will be stimulated so nicotine causes stimulation and nicotine is usually present in uh, bd it is present in tobacco it is present in all these things now i have mentioned here uh, we have some gums we have some nicotine transdermal patches ओके थोड़ा बहुत चीविंग गम्स आई हैव मेंशन सी इन हॉस्पिटल्स वी यूज निकोटिन ट्रांसडर्मल पैचेस एंड निकोटिन चीविंग गम्स दिस टू कॉम्पाउंड्स निकोटिन कंटेनिंग कॉम्पाउंड्स एज निकोटिन ट्रांसडर्मल पैच एंड निकोटिन चीविंग गम दिस टू ड्रग्स आर यूज्ड फॉर द पेशेंट्स हु आर ट्राइंग टू स्टॉप स्मोकिंग ओके स्टॉप स्मोकिंग स्टॉप करने के लिए सडनली वी कॉन्ट स्टॉप नो एनी बडी कॉन्ट स्टॉप सडनली so to decrease if 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 suddenly they stop smoking they may develop withdrawal symptoms so to overcome withdrawal symptoms we use nicotine transdermal patches and nicotine chewing gums smoking kam kar de ke chewing gums aaj ek do kal uh, slowly we can taper the dose okay so in in stopping the smoking in smoking cessation treatment strategies we use nicotine patches and nicotine uh, chewing gums these are the important points about nicotine and nicotine is se jyada in other conditions we we don't use nicotine is also very lethal one nicotine has addictive property nicotine has carcinogenic property nicotine has uh, all cns properties and when when patient takes lot of smoke through inhalation route patient will develop bronchitis patient will develop respiratory disorders asthma will be, can be developed uh, lung cancer can be developed many things can be can be developed okay so this is the uh important point about nicotine i think uh, that's it for today i think we discussed some uh, acetylcholine agonist and in next class i'll try to explain you about acetylcholine stress inhibitors okay cholinesterase inhibitors till then we'll meet in the next class